Sanjay, I don't know, having spent 30 years in, uh, well, 25 at the World Bank and 5 at the UN, I'm probably eminently unsuitable to comment on this topic. But since I've been away for about five years, I probably have a little distance now and I can look back on it with some perspective. I think, uh, personally, I think this question has been asked almost every decade since 1960s, at least. Multilateralism at the crossroads. I think um, the question that sh perhaps needs to be asked is, are we, are we at a worse uh, point than that? There's a book just out by Richard Haas, who was a senior U.S. State Department strategic thinker, called A World in Disarray. Just come out. And um, I always like to read Kishore, Kishore Mahubani. I don't know if you, you people are familiar with him, but Singaporean diplomat, head of the Lee Kuan Yew Center, and um, somebody who is very provocative, and not somebody I always agree with, but I enjoy reading. And in 2015, which I consider to be the apogee, as it were, of multilateralism, that was the year in which the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations were agreed upon. There was a conference held in Addis Ababa called not Triple A but Quadruple A, Addis Ababa Action Agenda, where the whole world came together to agree on a financing plan for the Sustainable Development Goals. It was the year in which the Paris Climate Accord was signed. You know, who would have thought that, right? And the best line came from Kishore Mahubani who said, we are no longer 193 boats and ships in a global ocean, but we are 193 cabins of various sizes in a global ship and need to manage our cabins, but also need someone to steer the ship through turbulent waters. This is Kishore Mahubani in 2015. And we have Richard Haas, two years or three years later, a world in complete disarray. So to some extent, um, we did have a bit of a golden period for about 25 years. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, you had pretty much a unipolar world. Uh, and that unipolar world <coughs> dictated and prop, uh, sort of prodded multilateralism because it suited its interests and for and it was a process that built up there was a series of UN conferences which you may or may not remember but you know John Tian for education there was Copenhagen there was the Rio summit you know, there was a series of building blocks which ended up in a millennium summit in 2000 from which came the millennium development goal and initially people were quite skeptical about all this, but after 15 years, uh, I think they turned out to be more successful than anybody would have ever thought. I remember I was the World Bank's director in Turkey. In 2002, I asked the Turkish minister, had he ever heard of the MDCs? That's what they were called, Millennium Development Goals. And he thought I was referring to a British sports star. <laughs> Even India did not sign on really to the MDGs till about 2005. Of course, India then retroactively pitted itself towards them. But this is the story with many countries. And then, of course, we ended up with the SDGs. So, and now here we are, so quickly, a collapse of this whole thing. So I do agree with to some extent with Raja that I'm not as optimistic about this uh, for some period of time at least. And the other reason for that is the rise of China. Uh, the One Belt, One Road Initiative is a coming out party for China. China would not, would want
wants to play within the current multilateral system until it can get strong enough with its own system that it can begin to supply it. And there are plenty of signs of evidence of that. What China is doing with its One Belt, One Road initiative is to recreate in a way a bipolar world that we had earlier with the United States and the Soviet Union. But it's doing it in a much more clever way. It has set up new financial institutions, but it still says it's still a member of the existing multilateral institutions. It's uh, signed on to all the regional agreements along the One Belt, One Road. It is uh, gradually chipping away at the power of the existing multilateral system, but yet playing by the rules of that system. And it will continue to do so unless, until it has the power to be able to uh, supplant it. I think the uh, Napoleon perhaps said it best. You know, when he was asked about China, he said, "No, let's let's attack Russia first. Let that let that sleeping dragon sleep, because when it rises, it will shake the whole world." And I think China will gradually rise and shape the existing edifice of the multilateral system with its own system. There's probably no other way. And uh, the commander of the Pacific Fleet, the US commander of the Pacific Fleet just said today that China is now in a position through the One Belt, One Road investments that it is making to be able to put choke points on all the trading systems, all the major trading systems in the world. So I remain a bit skeptical, uh, but let me stop.